when all the people were baptized, Jesus also came to be baptized. And while Jesus was praying, the skies opened and the Holy Spirit descended on the anointed one in visible form, like a dove. A voice from heaven said, you are my own, my beloved, on you my favor rests. You take a deep breath and watch as the crowds gather along the river. People shifting their weights as they wait their turn. They've waited for this day. People in their communities and even families have had this experience. And now it would be their turn. Their turn to go in. Their turn to come out changed. Their turn to belong. You think, John is a good conduit for this work being done. You hear the sloshing of the tide against their legs as each new person steps into the water. It's a bit cold. And if you wade in too far, the current picks up. But you see that they are staying in the shallower end, wading into their ankles, bend their knees. A small boy waiting his turn gets goosebumps, and you aren't sure if it's the water or the moment. They are ready. Water up to their waist, hope up to their heart. John takes a woman by hand, and she notices that his hand is warm even though he has been in the water all day. There was a crowd bigger than anyone had expected, even you. John turns to the woman, the sun in his eyes, his mouth turned in a slight smile, and he asks her questions about her faith. You place a prayer on John's heart, and he starts to speak. A prayer that is all at once just for her, and also for everyone who has passed through these waters. She answers and braces herself for the cold water that is about to come. And she gives herself over to the weight of this moment, both physically and spiritually. You envelop her, lowering with her into the water, covering her from her toes to her eyelashes. Tiny air bubbles escape from her nose and rise as she goes beneath the surface, far enough under that when she opens her eyes just a bit, the faces staring back at her are a little bit blurry, a little bit distant, yet very present to the moment. You hug her tighter. The three seconds she's under the surface feels more like a full day filled with warm sunshine. You love this moment. The ritual, the connection. And even though it may seem sometimes that people just go through the motions, you know that no two people, no two baptisms are the same. The woman feels the support of John's hand on her back, guiding her back up. You move with her, breaking the surface of the water together with a gasp of relief and excitement for both of you. You go back to watching, the crowds of people talking, those still waiting, those who have already had their turn, you see the woman you just baptized still standing in the water, her eyes blurry with tears. You place a prayer on her heart, and she hears you with perfect intention. 
the woman grabs the hand of her brother, who just moments before had made the same commitment that she did. He's smiling so wide that his cheeks look full. The woman realizes that her brother's smile mirrors her own. They hug each other and help each other out of the water, wet, sandy, knowing they are claimed as your own. This will be a moment in their faith that they can call on when they need support or reassurance that you are still with them. It will be a day they share in story with those that have been baptized and those that are still discerning their calls to the water. You think, they are smiling because when you are filled with love and hope and liberation, you can smile. You too are smiling with your whole self as you watch from where you are, which is everywhere and nowhere, no specific place, and at the same time, in every space. You can see both the big picture as well as the tiny details of the day. Back at the waters, the crowd gets silent. You feel yourself pulled to their gaze. Jesus is here. Jesus is here to be baptized. You recognize in yourself that you move with the beat of his heart. You have since the moment that time began. Everyone there for their baptism has taken their turn. Jesus watches as the last of them climb their way out of the waters. John, too, makes his way towards the shore. But John steps in, or Jesus steps in and reaches out his hand. They clasp their hands together as they step into the water a bit deeper, holding each other. Vulnerable, steadfast, ready for what comes next. You place prayers on both of their hearts as they speak with each other. Speaking into existence a new commitment to the work that they are called to do. The work we are called to do. This is, after all, what you do. The work. The work of justice. The work of support. The work of holy and unending love. It's time. You cradle Jesus as he is lowered into the water, wrapping him in the blessings that have been with him since birth. A very public, yet ultimately very intimate moment. This intimate moment is shared with every part of you. It's shared with every part of you every part of him, every part of every person that has been or will be in those baptismal waters. That is the point. We are reminded once again that we are all pieces of the same whole. You can't stay away, so you move back into the waters where John is now praying over Jesus. As they pray, the woman from before thinks she sees a dove and tells her brother who is eager, eagerly looking on. Creation can sometimes forget that you are visibly present when they are open and vulnerable and humble enough to see you at work. You think, at least they know the importance of being seen, of being seen in their faith. Because in order to be seen, you have to show up. 
it's true for you, and it is especially true for them. And then, and then you can feel it. The words are, are yours, but it's not your voice exactly. It's like the making of a memory in a language that everyone speaks and that everyone can hear and that everyone can understand. Your presence hangs in the air as it continues to settle in the waters. It says, you are my own, my beloved. The crowds then start to disperse. Although it may seem like it, Jesus' baptism wasn't the end. It's the comma in a sentence of baptisms throughout time set to punctuate the sacrament with a reminder of its holiness, connecting all that came before and all that would come afterwards. People discuss this day as they wander back home, and again, everyone hears on their hearts as Jesus hears in his soul, you are my own, my beloved statement that is said to him, but meant for every person who would ever share the baptismal experience. They are our beloved. Or as Solomon said, I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. Our love goes both ways and is without end. This will be an important reminder as they move in the world, throughout their lives, calling upon you, knowing you are present. You are filled with the warmth of love, as you often are when creation does the work they are called to do with you. Throughout the ages, people catch on that you accompany them in their work. And you are named more and more in the prayers of your people. When you are with Jesus on earth, you feel whole. But when you are with creation, you feel beyond yourself. Yourself and then some. Like bonus self. During Jesus' time on earth, you are constantly at work, as you still are today. Jesus will call on you for major moments to remind our people that with you, their work is holy. And as you and Jesus both know, they will need this reminder when he is gone from their sight. While Jesus is on earth, you know he will intentionally call on you as he brings good news to the poor, as he calls for a release of the captives, as he helps the oppressed go free. He is showing them that we are still here, that we will always be here with them, with you, even when they feel apart from us. He will even call on you in the end, and he knows you'll be there, because you are always there, because the Spirit is always there. The Spirit is always here. Here for the world, here for each and every one of you. Here in this space. Here in our water of community. Here on the banks and shores of the places we inhabit and the places we will go. The Spirit is here. The Spirit is here with the park, in our work with the immigrant communities, both in New York and at the border. 
It is with you as you prayerfully and faithfully give your offerings towards New Sanctuary Coalition today. The Spirit is with the park as we weep with those families who have lost children in the custody of our government. And it is with each of you today, those here in person and those online, as you live out your Christian faith by seeing people as they were created and then calling them beloved. The Spirit is with you in those moments of deep suffering and communal longing for justice and peace. The Holy Spirit is present with those enslaved to sex trafficking as we recognize this week for Sex Trafficking Awareness Week. The Spirit is holding them as they call out in prayer, holding them when they feel left behind and forgotten by those who were supposed to love them. The Spirit is with those in that work and of that work. It is with those that are starting this new year feeling alone or lost. It is holding the two hot hands of a parent and child having difficult conversations. The spirit is there with those further along in age, sitting home alone in a chair that fits just them, remembering the life of conversations that no longer call and are trying to grab a hold of what might come next. The Spirit is there. The Spirit is there with those who doubt their gifts and put down their paintbrushes or shy away from their callings and don't apply for a job they are qualified for or need guidance to navigate the anxieties of the future because it looks different than what they had imagined. The Spirit is there, the Spirit is here, holding you, guiding you, calling you back home. And the Spirit is also here as you rejoice in your personhood. Every time you commit to be seen, every time you smile at yourself in a mirror, every time you laugh, Every time you hear a piece of scripture and know that somewhere in the span of time that that piece of scripture was written just for you. The Spirit is with you as you hesitantly ask your neighbor how they see God at work in their world. And your eyes and your heart are open to something entirely new. Spirit is there. The Spirit is in that connection. The Spirit is that connection. And friends, our Holy Spirit is with you as you rejoice in experiencing or remembering the sacrament of your baptism. Your baptism, which is joined in the water and love with Christ Jesus himself. A holy moment in your faith journey, whether you were a baby or an adult, no matter the amount of water used, your baptism shares the water with the triune God, the God that created you, the God or the Christ that redeems you, and the Holy Spirit that continues to sustain you, like an endless cup of water to quench a thirst you didn't even know you had. Through baptism, God, in communion with the Holy Spirit and Christ Jesus, call you beloved and eternally claim you as their very own. And although you were vulnerable in that space, you became steadfast and ready for what comes next. In baptism, prayers have been placed on your hearts and speak into existence a new commitment to the work you are called to do. The work we are all called to do. This is, after all, what we, the baptized, are called to do. The work. The work of justice. 
the work of support and the work of holy and unending love. Amen.